Okay. Um, so John has a question. Quite a few times young people ask, how do you know that it's not your thoughts, but it's the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Yeah. So how do we give a reply to that? Right. So uh, so this is in line with uh, you know what we were looking at, uh, how God speaks to us in our spirit. So we receive the information in our spirit. Um, we hear in our spirit. And our mind processes it, right? We, uh, in, our, in our soul, uh, realm, we process it, okay, we discern it, we test it, you know, is it righteous, is it holy, etc. And it all happens in, you know, within seconds. Um, so, but then, uh, how do you know that it's not your thoughts, right? But we need to understand that, um, you know, uh, when God gives, uh, or when God speaks, when God emphasizes certain things, uh it is um you know it's it's it is your spirit right uh where he is speaking and it is uh definitely when uh, you know your mind process it is your mind you know your thought uh, uh your you know your mind processes it so it's happening there it's not happening outside it's happening right here inside so the so the thing is it can seem very very close to uh the fact that it's hey, maybe it's just me or maybe it's uh, you know it's it's just my thoughts or my imagination. Uh, maybe I'm just psyching myself up to think on these lines. Maybe it's not God at all, right? So um, so that definitely is a question. Maybe for our own, uh, you know, we, we have these questions ourselves, and maybe someone asks, you know, so that's a very uh, a real possibility that happens, right? And um, and that's why we we have to test all things. And hold on to what is good. You know, we we need to test all things. So they're necessary for us to test. Um, so uh, so how do we you know how do we test it? Uh, we test it with the word of God. We test to see whether it's uh, whether it's uh, you know it's righteous, it's holy, whether it's uh, um, whether it's uh, exalting Jesus and so on. So, but having done that, you know, how do we still know whether it's you know, it's it's just our good intentions, and not maybe we are praying for someone, and then uh, you know we we have these good thoughts about them. Yeah, right? yeah, you want to bless them, right? You want good things to happen to them, and uh, and maybe we are thinking yes, you know. So how do we know that? Uh, well, there is no set formula. We know that you know it is based on our walk with God, our relationship with God. And our intimacy with him, right? Uh, so, um, so the the uh, the 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 answer, or the tough answer, is that you know, continue to walk with God, continue to walk with God, continue to hear His voice, continue to do it, right? And we'll grow in relationship with that. You know, one scripture which uh, would be helpful is. Um, uh, when we go to Hebrews, and uh, well, no, well-known scripture, uh, you know, Hebrews four and verse twelve, right, it says, "For the word of God is living, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, okay, uh, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart." Okay, so soul, spirit. Thoughts, intents of the heart. So the word of God is uh, the Rhema word of God is you know living, powerful. So the word of God is definitely a discerner. So um, that's something that we can latch on to. You know, uh, have uh, a, a rich deposit of the word of God right, in us, not just for information, but to really know the heart of God. To you know, uh, we read about this and we, we get to know about God's heart, God's nature um, and uh, how God responds and what God says and we really know about his compassion, we reach I mean we um, have a firm understanding about uh, um, you know his standards, his holiness etc so we have that in our heart and that word we see is a discerner of the thoughts and intents, so discern is to judge between okay what is just my thoughts or what is a you know much deeper? It's an intent of the heart, and it even pierces its vision of soul and spirit. You know what is of the spirit and what is of the soulish realm. What is of the spirit? What is of the soul? Um, what is in my mind will emotions? It is something you know that is my own imagination, 
or it is something deeper that has been prompted in my spirit. So the word of God is a discerner. Okay, so that's why you know uh, you know the importance of uh, us being filled with the word of God. Right, uh, importance of learning, understanding, uh, knowing the word of God, having a, you know uh, all these revelations in, in our heart. So that's that's uh, that's the thing. The second thing is, of course, you know, relationship, walking with God. Um, yes, uh, we grow in our intimacy. We grow in our familiarity in identifying the voice of the Spirit. And, and how does that happen? It it, it is when we walk with Him day to day. Um, so, yeah, so that's the journey because we, we we actually wish that there was a formula, you know, like one plus one is two. It's very clear. It's a formula. And yes, you know, I have this, this, and then therefore God has spoken. While we do have the, the method, the principle, uh, we need to go, you know, have it the principle. We need to walk with the presence of God and with both you know, we will be hearing and doing things successfully, right? And does that help, John? Um, yes, Master. Yeah. yeah, okay. So so definitely we can teach them the principles, you know, uh, young people, we teach them, okay, this is what happens, this is how you hear. Um, but also we need to undergird with the fact that you walk with them, you know. And also the, the thing that they, sometimes we make mistakes, right? Uh, and then maybe we can, we can make, you know, we are non-critical mistakes. Uh, so, yeah, just step out in faith, and uh, you know, maybe maybe we make some mistakes. Instead, of, sometimes we we come back, we learn from those mistakes. Um, but we, the thing is to keep learning, keep journeying with God. It's it's just like how uh, I'm sure you know, John. Um, John is married. John's wife, lads. If she calls on the phone, if John is in Bangalore and she's John will identify your voice. Yes, John? Of course. <laughs> yeah, and how did that uh, identification, you know, how did that come about? You know, even though, you know, you, know, you may not, it not, may not be a video call, yeah, because you've heard the voice over and over again, right? You've heard the, you've, you've heard the angry voice, you've heard the, you know, the, <laughs> the joyful, cheerful voice of glads, you know, all emotions you've heard, right? And it's, uh, you're familiar, right? Having been with the, and walked with her. So it's the same with God. Relationship, intimacy with Him, having heard uh, over and over again. Right? Okay. Thanks, Master. Right, right, John. Okay, so let's, uh, so in our, so we feel, right, there's a, you know, there is a compelling uh, feeling in our spirit, right? It's, uh, it just won't go away, maybe. Um, and uh, Paul, um, you know, uh, writes about that. Uh, I mean, oh, sorry, uh, it's written about Paul. Let's look at the book of Acts, um, a couple of scriptures. Uh, Paul said, uh, sorry, Acts 17, verse 16, talks about how Paul is in Athens and he's stirred in, his, in the spirit. Okay, he's provoked within him. Um, Acts 17 and verse 16. Yeah, if, if you're looking at the uh, at the at the picture, maybe we'll, I'll just project it. Just a minute, please. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. I hope you can see that. Yeah. Okay, so we have the, the spirit, soul, and body, and we we see that uh, you know we draw uh, information uh, from the spirit realm, you know, from the physical realm through our natural senses, right? We see both happening. Okay, so if you look at uh, yeah, I'll just play put that here. Um, Acts seventeen and verse sixteen says uh, it's, his spirit was provoked within him, right? So. There's something that happened in his spirit it was stirred up, provoked. So you know, so he felt something in his spirit. Okay, so he's able to identify. You know, he was okay. Something is happening deep within. It's not just his mind, but it's it's his 
you know, a spirit within him. Um, the next chapter, Acts chapter 18 and verse 5, uh, it says that uh, Paul was compelled by the Spirit. Of course, here is referring to the Holy Spirit, but he was compelled. You know, he felt, uh, you know, he, he felt compelled to do this. You know, I need to do this, and likely, most likely, it was in his spirit that he felt that compulsion. You know, I need to testify. Um, so he was compelled by the Spirit. It says when Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia. Paul, compelled by the Spirit, and testifies to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, um, and then we look at um, uh, one other verse, which is uh, Acts twenty, twenty-three. Um, yeah, twenty-two and twenty-three. Okay, twenty-two. Um, so here, Paul is meeting with some of the leaders. Elders from Ephesus, the church in Ephesus, they've come to meet him. This is the last time they're seeing him, etc. And uh, so Paul um, says, you know, I go bound in the spirit. You know, it's like my spirit is tied up. I go bound in the spirit uh, to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city, saying that chains and tribulations are awa uh, awaiting me, right? uh, await me. So something that is physical, like it's going to be a time of imprisonment, it's going to be a tough season for Paul. Um, so Holy Spirit testifies that. So so he's feeling that in his spirit, like in the inner man, um, that there's a kind of um, a bound uh, or a binding or a tying up you know, that's uh, that's happening. Okay, uh, Ezekiel also talks about that. Um, Ezekiel, the, the prophet. Um, so let's look at a few uh, a couple of verses there. Uh, Ezekiel 3 and verse 14 says, So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away. You know, we, we saw these uh, scriptures earlier when we were looking at the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. We're coming back to this. Um, lifted me up, took me away, and I went in bitterness in the heat of my spirit. So something that he felt in his spirit. Um, and he says, the the hand of the Lord was strong upon me, and so on. So you you see that in the spirit, uh, in our uh, in the realm of the spirit, uh, we we feel or we feel compelled, and this is one of the ways by which this, the spirit of God uh, communicates to us, and this is the the way He did, and uh, and He chooses to do that. Okay, so the next one is, of course, we have the physical. Uh, seeing, and we similarly the seeing through the eyes of the spirit in the inner man. Okay, now uh, we see a lot of that in the Old Testament, where God would talk to the prophets and He would show them certain things and he'd give them explanation of those things. Right? Um, let's look at uh, Amos and uh, maybe just look at one verse. Um, Amos chapter 7. Okay, Amos chapter 7 starts by, uh, it starts with this, right? Thus the Lord showed me. Okay, what did he show? Locust swarms at the beginning of the late crop. Indeed, it was a late crop after the king's mowings. Uh, so it was when they had finished eating the grass of the land. Then I said, okay, so he's showing him a picture. Showing him, it was most likely like a moving picture, a visual. The Lord is showing Ezekiel. The Lord, um, the Lord is showing Amos. Sorry. So he says, uh, the Lord showed me. Again, we see um, verse four. Thus the Lord showed me, and behold, the Lord called for conflict by fire and had consumed the great deep and devoured the territory. So it was something that the Lord was showing him a picture, and uh, you know. Uh, it was it was there for Amos to um, receive and see. Then, thus he showed me. Behold, the Lord stood on a wall made with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. So, here again we see the, a picture that was shown to um, Amos, and on and on. You know, we see several references. Chapter eight also. Thus the Lord showed me. Behold, a basket of summer fruit, and then goes on to explain. Um, Right, so uh, we see this. 
Okay, so it can be pictures that the Lord shows us. Uh, it need not be physical with our physical eyes, but then you know that it's you know it's something in your mind's eye, right? In your spirit. Um, Job thirty three talks about how God speaks in dreams. Okay, let's uh, let's go to Job, and uh, I think it's verse fourteen, right? Yeah, Job thirty three. And verse uh, 14, um, for God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their beds. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed and conceal pride from man. Okay. He keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Okay. So, so here's something very important happening here, right? And right when person is sleeping, okay, there's inactivity physically, the person is sleeping. Um, so God opens the ears and seals the instruction. How? It says in a dream, in a vision. Okay. Two things in a dream, in a vision. Um, so God gives this, and what is it? It's not just a, you know, a nice dream, but it's instruction. Okay, He opens the ears, seals the instruction, and it and the instruction is some you know it, it has some pretty serious consequences, in the sense it turns the person. Uh, from his deed, from his actions, and uh, you know, to conceal pride, to keep back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. So it's actually life changing, it's life preserving, right? And that instruction God is uh, communicating through a dream, right? We see that uh, even in uh, in the Gospels. Also, we see that um, uh, when God speaks to Joseph. And gives the instruction that he should take Mary, uh, because Joseph feels that okay, you know Mary's come and Mary shared this uh, information with him that she is carrying, and uh, he he decides to put her away, okay, uh, in the sense uh, Mary's betrothed, and he wants to you know very quietly just cancel this whole thing. And uh, and put her away, but you see that there is a dream that he has, and uh, Matthew chapter one and verse twenty. Okay, while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Okay, so uh, and and whatever the angel communicated uh, in Joseph's dream was a very uh, you know very very serious uh, piece of information, right? And what was that? Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Um, so all this was done that it might be fulfilled what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Right. So then, G then Joseph, verse 24, uh, being aroused from sleep. So he was sleeping. He had this dream. What is uh, strange is this, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. So he was he was very clear that God had spoken, even though it was a dream, right? He knew that God had spoken and he obeyed. So probably Joseph was in the, you know, uh, he was used to obeying God and God was used to speaking to him in these ways. Right and uh, and he was used to obeying God, and and so when he receives this communication through a dream, he just goes on to obey. Right, and he does that not just once, but he does that does that thrice. Okay, uh, the first time was this. The second time was um, verse thirteen, chapter two, and verse thirteen. Okay. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, 
for Herod will seek the young child to destroy it. Okay. At least, you know, which is recorded in, in, in Matthew Gospel. Um, verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. So second time also he, you know, it is again uh, an instruction to preserve the life of the baby Jesus, right? So he does that, he obeys. And then again, uh, in the same chapter, verse 20, uh, so verse 19, sorry, uh, verse 19, now when Herod was dead, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Okay, so we see these uh, three scriptures, and we and we see that uh, you know God communicated um, through His angel uh, some very pertinent, very important, life-changing, life-preserving information through a dream. Right, and there's no reason why He should, he should not do that. Uh, in today's time, why you should not speak to us in in dreams and visions? And in fact, when when we studied, uh, you know, when we looked at uh, the book of Acts and how the Holy Spirit moved in the book of Acts, we see that the Holy Spirit intervened and uh, you know spoke to Peter. Acts chapter ten, we read about that and how uh, he spoke to Peter in a trance, right? A trance like he wasn't he wasn't asleep. He was awake, but he had this experience of this whole visual of this, uh, you know, this big sheet being dropped from heaven um, and animals in it, and he heard the voice and everything happening, right? So, in the realm of the spirit, the Holy Spirit bringing this information across to Peter. Now, uh, so it is. You know, not just the physical sense of seeing, but in the spirit that he saw it. Right now, uh, well, we we could say uh, maybe he saw it physically right before him, right? But, but the thing is, it 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 might have seemed so real, but it's in the realm of the spirit, right? Then hearing, okay, so visuals. Then uh, also, it's uh, it's you know we know that God. Uh, speaks to us, we hear in our spirit. You know, it could be like an audible voice, it could be like an inner voice, uh, and we see several uh, times that um, you know we see that such instruction uh, being given. Uh, and Acts twenty one and uh, verse four. Okay, Acts twenty one verse four. And finding disciples, we three we stayed there seven days. They told Paul through the Spirit, not to go up to Jerusalem. Okay, a prophecy uh, through the Spirit of God. And, uh, you know, we, we they heard the voice of God. Prophecy is hearing the inspired or the, the, the word quickened by the Holy Spirit, right? So they heard the voice of God. They heard the word of God. And uh, they spoke the word of God. They conveyed that word to Paul. Right, um, so we see that. So it could be an audible voice, it could be an inner voice, it could be like an inner witness, um, it could be a word, right? Just one word. It could be a sense of knowing. It could be a flash of information. Um, suddenly, you know, you you you're in praying about the, praying for this person, and there is the sense of knowing that this person, very specifically, has had this problem. Information, it's it's what uh, you know. Uh, scripture talks about the word of knowledge, information about this person that they had something about their past, something they've had this kind of a you know struggle or a problem, or maybe at present they are going through. Okay, now it's not naturally that you learned or you you know studied or you you know you checked their you know some email or somebody sent no. It is the Holy Spirit bringing that information to your spirit. So you hear it in your spirit. So there could also be taste and smell, and uh, the, right because those are the other two physical senses. 
um well there are there are scriptures we talk about that also like uh, uh, god gives uh, john a scroll to eat and then he eats it and then uh, when he eats it it, it tastes uh, like honey but then in um, in his uh, belly it becomes bitter right um john uh, revelation chapter 10 and verse 10 okay then i took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it right um revelation starts by uh, starts with this um it, it says that um, who, john who bore witness uh, and it, it it talks about what happened uh, uh, and uh, what he saw right it says uh, he's in the island of uh, patmos uh, verse 9 and verse 10 i was in the spirit on the lord's day and i heard behind me a loud voice as of a uh, as of a trumpet so it talks about uh, him being led by the spirit into a, a supernatural realm rather and he was i was in the spirit on the lord's day and then he goes on to write all this so chapter 10 and verse 10 also something that is he's having the spiritual encounter and I, he says i took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth okay but when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. So sweetness, bitterness, something that he's experiencing in the spirit, because he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and uh, he experiences this. Right? And and sense of smell also, you know, people have testified uh, um, fragrance. Um, and uh, of course, we, we see the reference that uh, we are the aroma of Christ, and that talks about uh, not the literal aroma. It talks about uh, how we uh, we you know bring in an influence, bring in a change in the environment, um, but also the the sense of smell. Just like all these, you know, uh, uh, also could be there as well, right? So we see that um, uh, well, this whole realm in the spirit and God speaking to us bringing this information to us in the spirit and we need to discern of course okay i'll just stop sharing this um right um okay so we need to be discerning because not every dream is from god right we could have our own dream and like the question that Paul asked, uh, John asked, um, you know, it could be our own imagination, our own thoughts as well. And that is why we need to test. Um, in 1 Thessalonians, we see uh, Paul writing and saying, test all things. Okay, The word and the spirit agree, test all things. Right. So what has happened is that because of counterfeits, we know there are counterfeits. Okay, Counterfeit is something that is as close to the real as possible. Okay, because the real has great value. Okay, we need to understand that. Okay, because when you and somebody makes counterfeit currency, it is it is not they don't make counterfeit of tens and twenties and fifties. Right? The counterfeit is in in uh, in a, uh, in a like five hundred or two thousand. I don't know if 2000 is still there, but you know, big denominations of currency. Why? Because it's something of great value. Okay. So uh, there is a counterfeit that is there, that is made. Something that is as close to the real as possible, but it's not the real thing. Okay. Now, the question is because there are counterfeits, do we reject the real? You know there could be counterfeit currency, but does that mean that you don't, de you know, you don't receive or take uh, the real one? You don't use the authentic, right? The answer is no, obviously. Well, then you know how do we deal with it? We just need to know the real. Right? We need to immerse ourselves in the real. Then we will know the counterfeit, right? And that is what people do. Like even in the banks and those who are you know trained to um, trained to uh, uh, you know find out identify what is a counterfeit currency, they um, they don't 
uh, they don't necessarily you know deal with the counterfeit but they deal with the real thing okay. you know they deal with the real thing what is a real note look like real currency note look like uh, what are the features of it? How does it feel like? How much does it weigh? And what are those special details that are there? What is the hologram that is there? You, you lift it against the light. What are those? So they became in, they become intimate and well acquainted, so that when there's a counterfeit, you know that it is a counterfeit. It's not the real thing. Okay. So for us, we need to. Get acquainted with the real. Not fear the counterfeit. Not reject the real because there's a counterfeit. And and many times we, you know, it has happened, you know, sadly in Christian circles and say, hey, the new age, we know it's a counterfeit. We know the sources of the enemy. But we we just put everything away. You know, God speaking, God inspiring certain things in our heart and and we just put it all away and say, I, and maybe God is giving some, you know, something in the, uh, you know, visually is giving a dream is just don't consider it at all. Right. But the fact is that God wants to, well, why can't, why does he do, do all these things? You know, well, we don't know. It's just, God just chooses to. Right. Um, and so, um, uh, there's a question, Divya. If there is a phrase in, impressed in our spirit, um, may not be something found in the word. Yeah. How do we confirm if the source is the, is the Holy Spirit? Right? Let's say, um, okay, let, let's say there's a phrase, and uh, or you know, we were talking about a word, right? So the Holy Spirit brings a word or a, or a phrase or some information confirmed as spirit. Yeah, yes, it's true that it may not be there verb, verbatim in the Word of God. In the sense, you may not find a scripture there in the Word of God, uh, but but the fact is the uh, you know is uh, is that phrase you know is is it righteous? Is it unrighteous? Okay, it, uh, knowing the nature and the character of God, uh, that phrase you know is it uh, is it something which is uh, uh, which is in line with godliness? Uh, you know what is that phrase? Because you know a phrase could be a warning as well, you know, or a phrase could be a word of knowledge. Like let's say you're getting a word like murderer. Well, definitely it is there in the word, but the context is you know murderers and I think God they will not enter the kingdom of God. Right? So you you're getting a word murderer or murder. Um, so the thing is to to wait on God, ask the God, ask the Lord, Lord, what more? Do I do I pray against this? You know, is this per has this person that I'm praying for maybe uh, indulged in it? You know, in the past, or Lord, you know, do you want me to pray? Maybe he has an anger issue, and is, it's a warning that that could lead to this act if he's not careful. Um, so, what do I do, Lord? You know, first thing is to engage with the Spirit of God, right, and, and say, God, you know, what is it? What more? And and believe me, the Lord will lead because He's a God who speaks, and He will lead and say, "Okay, uh, maybe you just, you just you just feel impressed in your heart to pray, like right? pray strong and pray on those lines." Um, yeah. So the thing is to engage with the Spirit of God uh, and uh, and test and say, "Lord, what do you want me to do?" Right. So how do we? Yeah. So how do we confirm if the soul is the Spirit? Yeah. So the same way. Uh, it may not be uh, so, so uh, confirmation is uh, you know uh, as you're praying you know you you feel that okay I, I can I can just put it on the shelf you know maybe it's there's that red weight of God's um, uh, impression is not there right so we can we can just put it aside nothing wrong we can just put it aside and uh, if you know, even if we make a mistake, in the sense, you know, sometimes what happens is, uh, you know, maybe we are emotionally stirred up, right? We are, maybe we are tired in our spirit, you know, we are tired in our minds, we've had a long day, and we don't catch these things, you know, this thing comes, but then we put it away. Or maybe, you know, we, we make a genuine mistake saying, hey, that can't be God. But as we pray, as we ask the Lord, the Lord can bring this back to us. Right. Remember, the Pharaoh had the dream. Uh, he had two dreams, same message, 
right so um so god spoke to him twice actually he gave a dream to him twice uh, two dreams so god can actually bring that back in another way or maybe the same way um, bring it back back to our remembrance you can't shake it off and you need to you know do something about it right so 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 the thing is the beauty is that you know we're not doing it in isolation but we're doing it with with god with him so we can always you know ask him lord what is it what do you want me to do lord i'm you know i'm available uh, i'm i'm willing and uh, i'm submitted to you your lordship your word you know that's my foundation but what more you see you know all those safety measures are there uh, and uh, and also the posture of our heart it's one of humility and wanting to you know uh, do carry out his instruction and and we're engaging with him we're walking with him so will the lord will lead or maybe the lord will just say you know you know that it's it's not from god fine no problem right so the thing is for us to really engage with god in this way right walk with him in this manner uh, talk to him commune with him right because uh, and uh, and not just you know compartmentalize uh, our speaking to him our worship of him um to day in and day out that we continue to you know we take those moments um to commune with him you know uh, paul writes and he says you know pray um pray without ceasing right and he uses the word adeleptos in the greek pray without ceasing so the thing is that uh, it's not uh, when we say adeleptos apparently it is used for um, a person who's coughing you know we say um, pray without ceasing a person who's coughing you know has his bouts of coughing and uh, you know we say this guy is coughing you know go drink something or take some medicine you're coughing continuously well actually if you look at it he's not coughing continuously Right? He has these bouts of coughs, and then maybe there's times when he doesn't have a cough, but then he goes into these bouts of cough again um, because of various whatever condition. So, you know, he's coughing at a leptos, right? So that is what uh, we're called to do, pray without ceasing, pray at a leptos, meaning there could be this, you know, there will be those pauses in between as we take care of, you know, things in the natural, maybe. Uh, yeah. But then we go back to engaging with god we're walking there just singing a praise to him talking to him right so um so as we do that then uh, we need to really engage with god in this manner be aware of what god is speaking um adeleptos uh, well, i don't know the spelling let me just <laughs> let, i'll give you the reference uh, i think it's adeleptos okay I'll I'll just give the reference. I'll put it on the screen. Yeah. Okay. So uh, so that's the thing. So I just want to encourage us for those of us who maybe had you know had a bad experience. It is possible, right? We had a bad experience um, with with this whole thing of being led by the spirit of the prophetic and because of abuse, you know, misuse in the church, abuse in the church. Now, that's no reason for us to throw away the authentic, right? I remember once having a conversation with a person once, you know, we, in church, uh, at All People's Church, we have uh, alternate months, we take time to talk about, okay, yeah, uninterruptedly without permission. Thank you. Thanks, John. Super. Um Okay, so uh, the thing is, uh, yeah. So alternate sun, alternate months. Uh, so on one Sunday of the month, we take time to uh, talk about, you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray, uh, teach about, uh, you know, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and and how it's for every believer, and pray, right, and pray uh, with that person to be filled with the Spirit, um, and uh, you know, we've seen many just. You know, at the time, just praying in tongues, or later, start to pray in tongues, and uh, we also have had, you know, like a prophetic, um, uh, like a vision, and so on. Right. So, so we do that. So once I was talking to this gentleman and uh, saying, you know, we, we have this uh, time, so would you like to stay back? Uh, then he said, you know, I, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just satisfied with the character of God. You know, I, I, it's all, it's all about love. It's all about character. Uh, of course, I don't want to 
I don't want to get into this you know, gifts of or the power of God and this character for me that's enough, right? Um, but we, uh, you know, then I was just uh, asking him what and all that, and I just came to know that well, he's not had a good experience with that. You know, who was teaching? Who was modeling it? So we just said, okay, I don't want anything of that. Okay, but we need to understand that um, all this comes from him. And all this is for his children, right? Uh, for uh, the sons and daughters of God. And all this is for a purpose, which is to benefit the believer and not to destroy the believer, right? To build the church. And as we saw, to minister in these ways, right? To further the kingdom of God, to bring the gospel, right? So, so we need to. We will we make mistakes. You know, does a child just begin to run and you know skateboard and ride? No, the child learns. Right? Does the child stop uh, walking because he, he or she has fallen down a few times? No. Did you stop? You know, riding the bike just because you fell down a couple of times, turning a corner? No. You got up and you rode again. Right. So we learned that. Oh, okay. I should not turn. Like that, you know, in in a in a when I'm taking a turn, I should not turn sharply. I should just be careful, balance, and turn. So, so also, you know, uh, when it comes to the truth of God's word, maybe there's abuse, maybe there's you know things that have happened. Uh, don't reject the truth. Raise the truth because it's it comes from Him who is the truth itself. Right, uh, and many of us could come from different backgrounds, right? Different church backgrounds. Like I come from a, uh, you know, typical CSI, uh, Church of South India, a liturgical background. So where, where, um, of course, now things are different. But when you know, when I was growing up, we we never, uh, we, like we we sang, of course, from the book. We sang the hymns. We we read the prayers. We said the prayers. Everything was read. Um, a very um, orderly, liturgical, and everything. So, well, did we lift hands as we were singing? No, we held, we were holding the books, right? Uh, so there's no question of lifting hands in worship. And, you know, uh, gospel was shared, altar calls were given only certain times whenever there was a guest speaker. You, you would never hear the gospel being preached in clarity from the pulpit. Well, that was, that's the background. So there's no teaching on the Holy Spirit. There's no teaching that this is for the believer. So this came much, much, much later. Um, so uh, once I heard the truth, I said, okay, this is, I want whatever is from God, I want it, right? Um, so church background. So that could be one of the things why why we are holding back, why we are, why we are, we, we don't want to move into it. So So that could be one of the reasons or just fear. Right. I remember there was one person who said, um, uh, one of our friends, uh, she she actually received the the gift of tongues and she started praying in tongues when when you know, when one of us were praying in tongues. But but she stopped and uh, and the reason was this: she felt she was afraid that you know what if it is not from the Holy Spirit? What if it's from you know some other spirit? And she she just stopped. Right, but the fact is, you know, whom did she ask? Right, those are questions. Whom did she ask? And was she living a life as a, a person dabbling in witchcraft and calling on evil spirits? No, a well-meaning, sincere, dedicated believer. So, uh, you know, wanting to uh, exalt Jesus, wanting to walk in His ways, and whom did she pray to? To the Lord Jesus. Right? So, so the thing is, the Lord says, if uh, you know, if a son earthly, uh, you know, about the earthly relationship, right? If a son asks for a bread, will the earthly father give a stone? Obviously, answer is no. Will the will the if the son asks for a fish, will he give him a, a snake, right, uh, or a scorpion? No. So, uh, so also our heavenly Father. No, he, even more, he's he's thousand times or n times better than our earthly father. So if you know how to give 
give good gifts to your children how much more your heavenly father so uh, you know if there are those kinds of fears we can put it away knowing that well the lord jesus you know he gives the best right so so uh, maybe you know this thing has been misrepresented like, like other truths right but we don't have to fear right and we can hear from him enjoy our fellowship with him and uh, and minister uh, out of that overflow right okay so um so we have about five more minutes so i just want us to just pray and talk to the lord this time i just pray to the lord um next session uh, actually we'll go into uh, next week when we meet we'll talk about uh, the baptism in the holy spirit and uh, then also we will take some time to pray in the end but today um yeah just take some time to pray and say lord um, you know i i yield myself to you right and and specifically let's just ask you know uh, the things that we saw uh, the scriptures that we saw and the ways that he speaks right? let's ask the lord uh, lord you speak to me right uh, i want to uh, receive in my spirit Right. revelation in my spirit i want to you know um, i want to be able to discern when you when you put certain things in my spirit when you you know when you weigh on my spirit when you compel things in my spirit i want to i want to discern i want to know that um, and when you when you, when you give me some pictures when you give me some some visions uh, I, i want to be able to discern that that it's not just my own imagination but it's you who's speaking uh, when i hear when i hear this phrase when i hear this word when i hear this you know maybe this the scripture maybe maybe this reference um but lord i i want to right i want to discern and i want to i want to grow in that okay maybe it's a, it's, it's a thing of taste it's a thing of smell whatever lord you know all these uh, you know ways uh, by which you put things bring in information in my spirit lord, communicate to my spirit uh, i want to know i want to know i want to be able to discern and let my mind my mind my will my imagination my, my everything let it be pure and holy let it be renewed by the truth so that when you put things in my spirit my mind will be quick to catch it right quick to catch it quick to hold on to it latch on to it because it's renewed to the truth as well it's renewed to the word as well so the word and whatever is put in my spirit by the holy spirit there's an agreement like there'll be a quickening there'll be an agreement and i'll know uh, uh, for sure that that you have spoken that i will te- uh, you know step out in faith and do it okay so let's just pray uh, we'll take a couple of minutes to pray maybe you, you, if you want you can just pray in the spirit you can pray in tongues um but um, yeah let's just pray out and um, you know this is let it be a hunger deep within okay saying god you speak just like samuel said pray the prayer lord here i am god speak to me your servant listen just like uh, uh, just like isaiah right? here i am god your instruction i receive here i am send me god. father god we we thank you and here we are lord opening up our hearts to you oh god to what to the one who is the way the truth and the life the one who cares for us lord we come and we thank you that lord you speak to us and i just pray right now lord for each one of us that whatever is blocking our hearing lord may it be removed oh god may it be removed oh god father we thank you that you said lord my sheep hear my voice lord you are the good shepherd and we are your sheep and lord you said my sheep hear my voice they know me and they follow me lord i pray that you will increase our hearing lord lord increase our spiritual ability to hear oh god yes lord like uh, we see in mark chapter 4 we come with a big measure and the with the measure that we use it will be measured back to us and so we come with that big measure we come with that hunger and we say lord you fill us you fill us today lord you speak to us today oh god yes lord pour out your spirit upon us oh father god here o sekentire re me shire ro mo sekentire here and there ro mo sekere re me pentere ro mo shi pala ba pentere here ro mo sentere re me shi bere me pentere pour out your spirit upon us god thank you lord here ro mo sekentire re me shekentire ro mo sekere re me pentere ro mo sekentire 
Hail Mo Sikin Thiri Rime Shiri Ramo Sikin Thiri Rime Shiri Ramo Sikin Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've called us to, yes, Lord, you've called us to um, really, uh, Lord, move, oh, Father God, move forward, oh, God. And uh, yes, Lord, to, to be path-breaking, Lord, in our, uh, in our ministering, Father God. We thank you that you called some of us to be like that, um, to, to uh, where there seems to be uh, no well-paved paths, our roads, oh God, to make that road to be apostolic, to be pioneers. You've called some of us, Lord, to be like that. And I thank you, Lord, that you're moving us in that direction. And it would require hearing you on a continual basis to be path makers or path breakers. Um, and I just believe the Lord is just putting that, you know, in your heart too. Um, you know, the Lord has called you to be a pioneer, to be apostolic, and to, uh, you know, to start a work maybe to, uh, in terms of ministry, to go where no person has gone before and, and do something new. But it, it, it would require walking in step with God. It would require hearing from Him. So um, the Lord is uh, emphasizing that, you know, to walk in fellowship with Him and to put these things in practice, right, to hear Him. Uh, to grow in that ability right? to hear the voice of God. Yes, to test and to put to practice when you know that it is authentic and real and true to follow the instruction, follow through the instruction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time. I just pray for each one of us, oh God, that we will, that we will Lord, walk in this privilege that you've called us to be hearers of your voice. And we will not just be, Lord, just complacent hearers of your voice, but we will be doers, O oh God, of your will, of your word. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Okay. We thank you so much. God bless. Have a great week. We'll catch up again um, next class. Okay. Bye-bye.